How to Analyze People by Harold Fox Discover all the secret techniques of an ex-CIA operative officer to speed reading anyone and uncover their true intentions. Read by D.K. Naidu Introduction As an ex-CIA operative, I was what is known as an operations officer or what you might know as a CIA agent. As an operations officer, I spent most of my career serving in multi-year assignments at a variety of overseas locations. My job involved gaining the trust of certain individuals and fishing for information or intelligence that can increase awareness of what other governments are up to. Usually, this process can take years and more often than not, Correctly analyzing people is instrumental to the success of my mission. Hence, after several decades of analyzing and reading people, I have decided to share the proven techniques which have served me excellently in reading people like a book. The goal of this book is simple. The goal and ultimate aim are to help you learn about the proven techniques that you can use to analyze and read anyone like an open book. How to analyze people contains no fluff meant to fill up the pages. Rather, it contains straight to the point information about the various techniques you can utilize in reading people. The techniques that will be covered in this book apply to any type of relationship. You can use the techniques to analyze people that you have just met or people that you have been meeting regularly. After reading this book, I can assure you that you will be able to easily analyze people based on proven and time-tested techniques. You are on track towards a future where you will be able to successfully analyze as well as read any individual around you. Without further ado, let us get to it. Chapter 1. The Importance of Self-Knowledge The importance of self-knowledge cannot be overemphasized in the process of getting to know other people. You can learn a lot about other people through a deep and concise knowledge of yourself. Self-knowledge helps you to know and appreciate how unique and different you are from other people and this in turn helps you to understand and appreciate how each person you come across is unique and different from the next person. Before you can understand other people, you need to start uh, by firstly understanding yourself. The better you understand yourself, the better you will be able to understand the people as well. A better understanding of yourself allows you to understand how internal processes work for you as well as others. For instance, understanding how some insecurities uh, you have about yourself change and affect the way you, have, you behave uh, will help you understand how this phenomenon is true for others as well. As an example, assuming your biggest insecurity lies in the fact that you consider yourself as a shy person, understanding that your shyness shows itself through self-effacing uh, body language and lack of eye contact can help you rec recognize the same phenomenon in someone else. All body language is an expression of an underlying self-belief. Thus, whatever body language you display or observe is uh, in someone else is an expression of what you or uh, that person believes about yourselves. Being able to thoroughly understand yourself will enable you to see the direct and indirect effect you have on those around you. Understanding the type of effect you have on people around you will depend on how well you understand yourself. For instance, from the shyness example above, your inability to maintain eye contact with other people might cause them to also look away whenever they are talking to you, or it may cause them to assume that you are being untruthful at the moment, as a lack of eye contact is sometimes a sign that a person is lying. Therefore, by understanding how your lack of eye contact can be translated, you can make an effort to maintain eye contact intermittently or simply stare at the bridge of the nose. If you do not try to understand your actions and uh, how they affect those around you, 
then anything you observe in other people will come through a lens of your insecurities without conscious thought on your part and uh, whatever image you form of such people will be false ultimately this will make understanding people more difficult to put it simply if you act in a disciplined and possibly a stern manner then people around you will naturally adjust their communication style to match how you act conversely if you act in a jovial and friendly manner people around you will tend to act the same way to you as socrates uh, once said to know thyself is the beginning of wisdom the wisdom that comes from knowing yourself is what you utilize when uh, trying to know other people to sum it up in a few short words i will say that self analysis is the key to successfully analyzing others analyzing yourself before you can successfully analyze other people you must first learn to analyze yourself analyzing yourself will be uh, will help you to build the necessary anal- analytical skills which you can then utilize to analyze other people needless to say when starting out analyzing yourself will be much easier than analyzing other people this is because you will not need to guess about your thoughts and feelings unlike uh, when you are analyzing other people your thoughts and feelings will be readily available for you to analyze however when analyzing yourself your biggest obstacle lies in understanding and figuring out why you feel the way you feel or why you think the way you think another obstacle you might uh, encounter in analyzing yourself is honesty the honesty required to accurately analyze yourself is often times than not painful however once you are able to get past the uh, aforementioned obstacles you will be able to identify your strengths your weaknesses as well as the root of your emotions getting started with self analysis starting out on the journey of self analysis may be daunting at first usually the process will differ from person to person however to help you simplify the process i will divide the process into three basic steps let us take a look at those steps below one contemplating your strengths and weaknesses the first process of self analysis begins with deliberating your strengths and weaknesses self analysis is all about developing a real picture of who you are and your strengths and weaknesses can help you paint a candid picture of who you are and what you are about developing a picture of who you are does not mean you have to focus only on the parts of you that are proud of rather you have to take into consideration the parts of you that you struggle with as your struggles are part of what makes you human deliberating on your strengths and weaknesses is the simplest part of your self analysis process you should start the process with an inventory of your uh, strengths this involves thinking about what you like about yourself especially the parts of yourself that consistently bring about or attract positive feedback from other people basically your strengths include anything you are good at that is anything that uh, comes naturally to you or anything you can easily do anything uh, you love about yourself anything others love about you your strengths are usually good things that make people want to be around you your strengths could include the ability to be empathetic or the ability to motivate people for example perhaps uh, people around you often tell you that you are good natured and tolerant with people or you know what you tend to motivate people around you you can add these good attributes to your list of strengths on the other hand your weaknesses include anything you dislike about yourself anything others dislike about you anything you tend to struggle with identifying your weakness often takes a special kind of honesty consider if you are constantly asked to work on a particular aspect of your character additionally try to think of negative attribute that uh, cause you to get on the bad side of other people for instance your friends could regularly mention that you usually fail to speak up and say your mind thereby indicating your potential weakness of lacking self confidence 
your weakness could also be that you often uh, offer unsolicited advice to people or it could be that you tend to be re disorganized and uh, forgetful regardless of what your weaknesses are you need to make sure that you are not too hard on yourself as reflecting on your weaknesses can be a tough and vulnerable experience you should keep in mind that your weaknesses do not have to stop you from living the life you want identifying your weaknesses uh, requires <coughs> openness and honesty but at the same time identifying your weaknesses means you know you have some flaws and you are willing to work on them after contemplating and successfully identifying your strengths and weaknesses the next step involves to re- recording your emotions and responses to events that you experience you might uh, require a journal and a pen for this part writing your emotions and responses down helps you remember them and at the same time it helps you process the information more easily and clearly essentially recording your emotions and responses to events that you experience will allow you to take a step back and observe the larger picture of your life uh, the best way to handle this part of your self analysis uh, process is to write a little about your daily if it little about your day before going to bed this allows you to process the day's events and how they might have uh, affected you during the day there will be events that trigger positive thoughts while uh, others will trigger negative thoughts instead of allowing these thoughts to leave your head unnoticed try contemplating them <coughs> try contemplating them and uh, writing them down whenever you can writing them writing them down will help you to be able to reflect on them later and ruminate on whether or not your responses to such events were appropriate your reflections on such events can therefore help you determine how to handle any similar event in the future 3 notice how you perceive others and their actions This step is not quite about analyzing uh, people rather it is about uh, noting how you respond to people around you as well as their actions this step can also be recorded in your journal recording how you interpreted other uh, people's action might help you realize <coughs> whether or not you your perception was accurate when you reflect on them later on for example you might interpret a person's lateness to mean that they do not care enough about you or uh, they do not respect you enough you might rationalize uh, that if they did they would have made an effort to be on time however later in the day when you reflect on it you might come to the realization that maybe their lateness was actually not intentional that maybe they got stuck in traffic or they missed their bus and had to take a late one when analyzing the actions of other people you do not need to dwell on the negatives you might decide to analyze a positive action such as receiving a gift from your romantic partner and how that made you feel if, if receiving a gift from your romantic partner made you feel very happy then you might realize <coughs> that uh, perhaps receiving gifts is your uh, love language reflecting on such a positive event might make you realize that uh, you prefer and appreciate receiving gifts from your romantic partner than if uh, they were to do something else for you this knowledge can therefore help you with your future relationships the steps discussed above can help you get started on your self analysis process you should keep in mind that essentially if uh, self analysis is an attempt by an individual to get uh, to understand his or her own personality therefore your ultimate goal for embarking on a self analysis journey should be to understand your own personality the knowledge or wisdom as socrates puts it you get from this process can then be used to analyze the personality of other people the three steps discussed above are not uh, the only means through which you can analyze yourself there are a few other ways you can utilize in conjunction with the three steps discussed above 
they include the following five word description this is a relatively quick exercise that involves you describing yourself with the key adjectives that best describes the type of person you are for instance if you tend to naturally care about the people you might describe yourself as compassionate under this this exercise you are the to think of five adjectives that fa factually describe who you are determining your personality determining your personality involves you trying to understand the attributes and traits that make up your personality you can determine your personality by self reflecting on the traits that you possess then uh, list uh, these traits down and make little notes about them so that you can better understand the information that you come up with there are different ways you can use to determine your personality and most of them have to do with your thought process however to help you get started listed below are a couple of introspective questions that can help with the process of determining your personality what are traits behaviors and attributes that define me as a person what are the words or phrases that people close to me would use to describe me what function or role do i play within my group of friends how would a stranger perceive me what do i want others to think about me what signals do i want to send to people identifying your core values it is important to think that only about your personality traits but also about your values it's important to think not only about your personality traits but also about your values your core values are the code by which you live your life these values will be what you strive to be and what you admire in others like integrity intelligence honesty etc psychologists often suggest that most people have a around eight core values and that these values play the biggest role in motivating their choices at work at home and in everyday life hence for this step you should make a list of the eight values uh, that you think guide you and your actions knowing your values will help you understand why and how you react the way you do as well as what tra what tends to motivate you spending time spending some time to think and contemplate uh, on how you develop these values can help you learn more about yourself were uh, your core values influenced by your parents or did your uh, values evolve as a result of your experiences while growing up reflection on how your core values come about will greatly contribute uh, to your self analysis process considering childhood experiences our childhoods tend to have extreme influences on our adult selves analyzing uh, yourself and how you behave will often involve looking back to your childhood you can use your journal to jot down whatever positive or negative experiences re you remember and consider how they affect you per uh, present presently for instance if you had a strict parent while growing up and was uh, severely punished for breaking rules then you might still be afraid of breaking rules as an adult analytical questions that can help uh, you a better help you to better understand yourself asking yourself certain analytical questions can help you better understand yourself hence under this uh, subtopic i will <coughs> i will include some profound analytical questions that will uh, lead you to a greater self understanding about yourself <clears throat> the aim of these questions is to trigger the analytical part of your brain to prompt you into having a deep conversation with yourself and this is uh, something most people never do there are no right or wrong answers to these questions all you have to do is ensure that uh, you are you answer the questions as honestly as you can <clears throat> you can copy these questions into a text document and uh, answer them there so that you will be able to reflect on your answers whenever you want to listed below are uh, the questions 
what are the activities in your life that make you radiate with joy what are the things uh, you love doing even when you are tired <coughs> or in a rush why do you love doing them would you choose to stay or leave a relationship or job that is making you unhappy what would hold you back from leaving a bad job or a bad relationship what are the things you believe are possible for you to achieve what are the things you have done in your life that makes you very proud what legacy do you wish or want to leave behind what does your presence in this world contribute to humanity if you could have a single wish granted what would that wish be how comfortable are you with the thought that you would one day leave this world which of your core values do you rank the highest to your best knowledge how do you think other people perceive you how would you like other people to perceive you what is one thing you wish you can change about yourself how confident are you in your abilities to make sound decisions for yourself which of your beliefs do you think is self limiting to you who is your greatest role model who is the most important person in your life Do you have a person you do not like yet you spend time with them if so who is that person and uh, why do you keep spending time with them even though you dislike them what is something that will always be true for you no matter what how do you make difficult decisions what is that one failure that you have converted into your greatest lesson how gratitude uh, does gratitude play any role in your life how do you feel about your parents what relationship do you have with money do you ever think about growing old if so how do you feel while thinking about it what role has formal education played in your life and how do you feel about it what notion do you have about the concept of destiny do you feel your destiny is predetermined or do you feel you have the ability to shape it however you wish what does your life mean to you i know these questions might seem or sound extremely difficult to answer but when you really think about them you will realize the simplicity in them these questions are meant to critically stimulate your thought process and the answers you get from them are meant to ultimately lead you to a greater understanding of yourself the process of self inquiry and ultimately self analysis begins when you ask yourself questions at first answering these questions might feel uncomfortable and unfamiliar especially if you have never done such uh, before yet as time goes on you will find that it becomes easier Also you should try to reflect on your answers to these questions from time to time you might even find that the more you reflect on these questions the more you tend to discover new insights about yourself benefits of developing an uh, analytical mindset basically getting a handle on analytical skills will improve and benefit every aspect of your life socially personally and even professionally it does not matter where you make use of your analyt- analytical skills whether in your personal relationships or even at work it will take a lot of work before you are able to efficiently analyze people however once you get the hang of it you will be able to easily analyze people you come in contact with the benefits of developing an analytical mindset are numerous however in this book I will uh, be discussing the top 4 benefits of develop, developing an uh, analytical mindset. <clears throat> One, you will become more self-aware. Developing an analytical mindset 
does not mean you will only be focused on analyzing other people. The first step to developing an analytical mindset is to start analyzing yourself. Self-analysis will make you more aware of your emotions and less confused about uh, how you feel. Increased self-awareness has wide-ranging positive ramifications. However, one of its most important effects is increased emotional intelligence. When you are more emotionally intelligent, you are better able to identify and manage your feelings as uh, they come up, neither, uh, repressing, neither repressing them uh, nor being lost in them. <coughs> Hence, developing an analytical mindset leads to increased uh, self-awareness, which tends to lead to increased emotional intelligence. As a self-aware in, uh, individual, you will find it less challenging to convert negative thoughts into positive thoughts. Appropriately adjust uh, how you view yourself, accept yourself for who you are and to live honestly and happily with other people. 2. You will appear uh, more considerate. Developing an analytical mind uh, will help you appear more considerate to those around you. Usually an analytical individual is motivated to be at peace and those around them. For the, this to happen, an analytical individual usually spends a lot of time and energy trying to understand the people around them. Taking the time and effort to understand what others are feeling and uh, responding appropriately makes an anal analytical individual look and seem extremely considerate. Therefore, developing an analytical uh, mind will help you understand other people's feelings and uh, understanding uh, what others are feeling will help you respond to as well as uh, treat them appropriately. As a result of this, people around you will come to realize that you treat people with consideration. This in turn will make people trust you more and rely on you. <coughs>